All right, let's talk about the Washington football team. I know they're the Washington Commanders, but they're still the Washington football team in my heart, okay? The Washington football team has a quarterback controversy. They have a decision to make as to who should start uh, for them. Let's talk about the two players that we assume are going to be in the quarterback controversy, uh, which one will end, will end up starting and which one I think should end up starting. So let's just get into it. First, I'm showing a play on the screen. You see a play design on the screen. This is uh, Sam Howell's college tape because he played a game in the NFL. I've actually covered that game and made a whole film study on that game on his channel. If you search Jackson Kruger Sports Sam Howell, it will uh, you know show up. But I want to talk about his you know the bigger sample size we have, which was what he was able to do in college. And to set the stage, if you know nothing about how he played uh, in college and how it worked. Essentially, the last year he was in college, he was in a really rough situation, but still found ways to have success and move the ball down the field. And I think this play is a great example of that, where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. So, okay, that's not a bad situation, right? Well, right when this play begins, you see that the receiver he is throwing to is not very open at all. There's not a ton of separation, but how just kind of figured out ways to still get the ball down the field. He's going with a back shoulder throw right here, which is definitely something you don't see a lot of young quarterbacks do, but this is the benefit that Sam Howell has in his game. As you see, the ball is thrown and, you know, they're able to get a completion right there. So good stuff there from Sam Howell to be able to pick up a touchdown in a way that a lot of young quarterbacks and even some veteran quarterbacks would not have been able to figure out. This is kind of what Howell did was he just found ways to have success. Another big way would be in something like this, which you would not expect to hear this if you don't know much about Sam Howell, but a lot of what he did successfully was with his legs. Watch how on this play, he's going to, you know, fake a handoff, but then he's going to run the ball himself, and I mean, okay, right here, you could say, well, that was, you know, relatively good, but, you know, okay, okay fine, there's a lot of traffic, and he's probably going to get tackled soon, so, okay, you know, good work to get to this point, but, okay, now you're probably going to get tackled, right? Well, watch him kind of weave through the traffic and be able to get outside the numbers. So, okay, again, that part, definitely very good. But now, surely, uh, you are about to get brought down, right? Again, no. Watch him be able to get around, and he's going to somehow get a touchdown after all of this. That's an insane play that he was able to pull off. But the issue is kind of obvious, which is, will that work at the NFL level? And I do have to say, at the preseason level, it did work. At you know, when Watching him in preseason, he was able to have success with this as well. If you look at his pro football focus uh, draft profile, you see that there were multiple years that PFF was very impressed with him, a grade over 90 in both 2021 and in 2022. So the college stuff, the results were very good, but I think the question and the maybe issue that I'm sure you've already thought of watching this video is, yeah, but is that going to work at the NFL level? Are you going to be able to pull off those runs in, at the NFL level? Sure, uh, Justin Fields can do it, but there's a very big difference in the athleticism between Fields and Howell. Sam Howell, according to NFLDraftBuzz.com, just barely broke five seconds of a 40-yard dash, is not a very big player whatsoever, and yet oftentimes sort of uh, would run over guys in college in his running game. His running game was a huge part of how he was able to succeed, but I think there's two different ways you could look at that. You could look at that on one way and say the only way he was able to get success is with stuff that I just can't see working in the NFL level. Level, maybe it'll work in preseason, but once you get against NFL starters, probably won't work. The other way to look at it would be to say, well, he found a way to win. He found a way to get the ball down the field. And if that's not the way he'll have success at the NFL level, he has the ability to figure out other stuff. And it, he did that in college because it worked in college. Doesn't mean he'll do the exact same stuff at the NFL level. So to me, Howell is a complete wild card that Washington really, in hindsight, should have given more playing time last year. But I get that they were also competing for the playoffs and wanted to see what they could do. Moving over here, this is someone else's pro football focus chart. Jacoby Brissett, the challenger for the starting job uh, as, you know, it's Sam Howell or Brissett. They went out and they paid Brissett a good good chunk of money to bring in here. Uh, you know, uh, $10 million a year is definitely more than backup money. So they're paying him kind of in a way of saying, we're not sure if you're going to be a starter or a backup. 
But it's almost like the, I feel like the low end starter tends to get around like 15 million, whereas the high end backup tends to get like, I don't know, six, seven million. So they're kind of giving him more than the high end backup to make sure they keep him just because there's a chance he could be a starter, which makes sense. That's his role right now. And if you look at his PFF grades, he's coming off of a banner year for him. Last year was easily the best we've seen Brissett play, and we've seen him play competent football in the past. You know, in 2016 was when he first got playing time. That was when, you know, the Tom Brady suspension, Jacoby Brissett eventually got thrown into the mix there as the third string quarterback once Garoppolo got hurt. Uh, did get a full season of playing time in 2017 with the Colts after Andrew Luck, uh, you know, uh, or when it got injured, that was when he got injured in 2017. 2019 was when Andrew Luck then retired. So despite the fact that he entered both of those training camps as backups, he was still able to get you know multiple 900 plus uh, snap seasons. Then in 2021 was really when he had his best PFF uh, showing there and probably his most consistent season. He had shown flashes uh, in with the Colts and even with the Patriots, but 2021 was really where he kind of I think maybe showed that he could be more than just like a solid backup. If you remember, this was the kind of talk with Tua of people were saying, Tua, wow, he got outplayed by Fitzpatrick in 2020, which he objectively did. And then people were saying he got outplayed by Brissett in 2021, which he subjectively did, in my opinion. I, th I thought he did, but you could definitely argue that he didn't uh, with that year. But then obviously in 2022, Tua you know, put it all together and had a great year and Really, so did Jacoby Brissett. I mean, when he went to Cleveland, because Cleveland knew a suspension for Watson was coming, they wanted to have uh, a quality backup option that could potentially get them in position to make the playoffs before Watson got there. And they were in position. They were in playoff uh, contention. They were you know, competing for a playoff spot when he eventually lost the starting job, even though it wasn't really due to him losing it, more, though, more so than Watson was just obviously going to get it. Going over to some film, for Brissett, it was a lot of stuff like this. It's really just him being able to run an offense effectively. You have Amari Cooper running a route that's going to eventually break towards the outside. And look at how when this play begins, really good route by Cooper, gets the corner to kind of get his hips turned towards the middle of the field. He's cutting right now, and you see Brissett, he is in the throwing motion. He's someone who does kind of remind me of Fitzpatrick in a way. Of What Fitzpatrick did was when he got to the NFL, kind of realized, hey, Maybe doesn't have the biggest arm. Let me shorten up on those throws a little bit in terms of let me throw a little bit before I know it's going to get open or not will result in more interceptions, but also will result in more points getting scored as a whole, you know, by your offense. Brissett makes this throw really at the perfect time. The timing is what he had down last year, and that's what I think Washington, uh, if he they decide to name him the starter, would do it for, would be because of that kind of thing. So who should start then? Who is the starter? Well, again, you could let him uh, compete in, you know, uh, training camp or even in preseason, but I don't know what you'd really learn from preseason. I think we kind of know that Howell can do well against preseason a, a competition. I guess the one thing maybe is get Howell in some first team reps in the preseason, see if that uh, could tell you something. Personally, I think that Jacoby Brissett will be the better player right now. With all due respect to Sam Howell, I do think that Brissett is the kind of guy who, as of right now, should be able to outplay uh, someone who's barely played the position at the NFL level before, and I do think Howell, there will be a strong learning curve. But I should mention, that's not the question I asked at the beginning of this video. I said who should start, not who's the better player, and we just saw last year with Cleveland that, you know, Watson was certainly not ready to play just yet and was not better than Brissett had been playing, but they still went with him to build for the future. We see that happen all the time, actually. Again, you could even argue uh, with the Tua versus Brissett thing. Maybe Brissett was a little bit better than Tua, but obviously Tua had the much higher ceiling and has now hit that ceiling. Um, so for Brissett, do you still want to win right now? Is that the goal? Well, ESPN ranked Washington as the uh, 24th uh, best team in their power rankings, which doesn't necessarily mean that that's where they are. But if they really are a bottom 10 team, then yeah, probably does make sense to go with Howell for a little bit, see what he can do. But I'd probably go the other way. For me personally, I don't know if they're 24th worst. I think they might be a little, or 24th best, I should say. I think they might be a little bit better than that. Uh, I would have to 
go through it and look at it myself, but that feels low to me. And I think that if you put Brissett in there, you could be competing for a playoff spot. And listen, if it you know doesn't go very well, well, then you can throw Howell in and he can be your plan B. He can be someone who, who knows, maybe he'll figure it out. Uh, you obviously don't want to have another season like last year where you just missed the playoffs and only get one or two years, uh, one or two games of Howell anyway. But for me, I think I would go with Brissett as the day one starter. But that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.